Welcome to Maple Madness. I'm Kate Boddicker. And I'm Isaac Swatsky. As you can probably tell, it's Casual Friday here in the Globe Studios. And it's been a long day, so this is what we're going with. But, you know, getting in the spirit of sports. It's Fly Day. <laughs> now, as we get ready for the Final Four on Saturday, we'll take you through an update of any major surprises in the Sweet 16 or Elite 8 and how exactly our Globe Bracket Challenge is going down. We also have a special segment with our first ever guest on the show to look at how exactly this March has made the tournament historic. So Isaac, what were your biggest surprises from this last week of game? Starting in the South region, top seed Alabama got upset by San Diego State. Creighton ended Princeton's Cinderella run only to lose in dramatic fashion to San Diego State 57-56. In the East, FAU pulled ahead late to beat four-seeded Tennessee. Kansas State and Michigan State played one of the more exciting games of the weekend. Kansas State topped Sparty 98-93 in overtime. FAU then kept on dancing by beating three-seed Kansas State 79-76. In the South, Miami's guard play was just too much for Houston. The Canes topped the number one seed 89-75. Texas flexed their muscles against Xavier in the Sweet 16 and carried over for the first 30 minutes of the Miami game. The last 10 minutes of the game was a different story, however. Isaiah Wong showed why he was the ACC Player of the Year, leading Miami to the school's first ever Final Four. UCLA and Gonzaga played another classic this past weekend. Every time they play, it is truly amazing. Gonzaga won that one only to run into the machine that has been UConn. UConn looked dominant for that whole game. First dismantling Arkansas and then following it up with just as dominant a performance in the Elite Eight against Gonzaga. So obviously you and I have been competing, but we also let our other Globe pals play along as well. So we wanted to take a quick look at those standings. Because no one has any of their final four teams left in the tournament, our contest has already been decided, so we can make our announcement early. It comes as a surprise to no one, but I did finish in last place. I stand by my method though, I had a lot of fun putting it together. It was worth a shot. In fourth place was Alyssa McDonald, and third place was Cormac Kublik. After following my heart, I ended up in second place, falling to Gabe Kermode in the final. So congrats to Gabe. If he wasn't graduating this year, we'd have to get him back on for some bracket tips. And speaking of words of wisdom from those at the Globe, Alyssa McDonald, softball queen, has a special report on this historic tournament. Thanks, Kate. This is the first time in the history of the tournament that 0-1 seeds have made it to the Elite Eight. Three of the four schools remaining have never made a Final Four, and three of the four coaches have also never made it either. This is also the first time since 1954 that two schools from the same state are making their Final Four debut. This tournament has been full of surprises, more than most tournaments, and there's still maybe plenty more to come. Back to you guys. Thanks, Alyssa. We have two very interesting matchups Saturday night. We have four teams that play with a lot of confidence and swagger. I am excited. I think that San Diego State's physicality and experience pushes them past Florida Atlantic. UConn is definitely the favorite going into the Final Four, but Miami is experienced and talented. I think that the winner of UConn Miami will win it all. Kansas beat Miami in the Elite Eight last year, so I'm rocking with the Canes. Don't underestimate FAU though. One, they have a pretty cool mascot. Two, you don't win 30 plus games in a season and make the Final Four by accident. However, if you employ the renowned syllable method, San Diego and Miami will be the teams facing off in the final. Now, we want to know your predictions for these Final Four matchups. Check out our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at 911 The Globe, and that's where you can find the poll. And you can make your own predictions on the Final Four. Next week, we'll check out who had the best predictions and take a look at that final championship game. Before we go, Isaac and I just wanted to take this opportunity to shout out all the basketball players in our lives. My brother recently made it to the state semifinals at our high school in Ohio. I got to go and watch and I couldn't be more proud of him. Congratulations, Zeke. I'm going to shout out my brothers as well. Moses, Levi, and Jesse, I enjoy talking ball with y'all. That'll do it for this episode of Maple Madness. The Final Four is right around the corner, so tune in next week for our season recap and more Maple Madness. <laughs>